this video series, we are going to cover how you can get a brand new VPS server and then install a control panel on that VPS yourself. And the control panel we are going to be working on is control web panel. There are several reasons why you probably would want to have a basic skill like this. And one reason is in order for you to save costs. So if you have a VPS server, there are two types of VPSs you can get. The same goes for a dedicated server. You can either get a VPS server that is managed where you now pay managed fees on top of your hosting fees. And then you have unmanaged VPS servers where you don't have to pay server management fees because you act like or you act as your own server administrator. And when you do that, it means that you have some basic Linux skills that you can use to um, do installation of your server, do basic server administration, so that when you have um, some issues here and there, you can always get into your server and fix those issues because you have basic Linux as server administration skills. At the same time, if you are a web host, for instance, or you are coming from the background of you've taken the courses on um, web hosting, starting a web hosting business that was discussed, in order for you to enhance your technical skills and be able to offer better support to your customers, it is important that you have basic skills like this. So in this video, we are going to install Control Web Panel on a brand new VPS server. And in the course of installing Control Web Panel on a brand new VPS server, it will give you an idea of how VPS servers work, how Linux work, and how you can interact with your server using basic Linux command. So what we are going to do is we are going to be installing this control panel here, control web panel. So if you have your VPS server already and you are ready to install control web panel on your VPS server, then you just need to come to this website, control-webpanel.com, and then you can follow this tutorial along. Now, if you don't have a VPS server already, in order for you to start having Linux server administration skills, the first thing you want to do is you want to get a VPS server on which you can practice and on which you can try out these things. So, um, if you are in, in, in Nigeria, then you want to go to hookup.com, you want to get a VPS server from Oracle. Just click on VPS and order a VPS server and then you can work on that VPS server. If you are not a Nigerian, look in the description box below and you would see some services where you can get a VPS server that is not too expensive and they have effective services that you can run your servers on. Now, with that out of the way, the next thing you want to have is you want to have an SSH client. Now, SSH is how you interact with your server or your Linux servers. So what you want to do is you want to go to, um, you want to do a search and you want to get Putty. There's a software called Putty and it's an SSH client that helps you to interact with your server. So once you get to putty.org, what you want to do is you want to get a copy of Putty. So they download Putty, you can see um, Putty, this is an SSH client. Don't get um, the Bitwise SSH client. You want to get the first one, which is Putty. So we want to get Putty, and then you want to download Putty, and then you install Putty. Once you have downloaded and installed Putty, then you are ready to go. So what you want to do is you want to launch your Putty, just like that, and then you want to grab the credentials that your provider has given you. So once you have ordered a VPS service from any of the providers that um, are available, the next thing you want to do is you want to get the credentials that that provider has given you. The, the credentials are, are usually the IP address to your server, the username to your server, and the password to your server. So it goes something like this. So you have the IP address. Now this is the IP address. So once you have your putty launched, what you want to do is you want to get your IP address just like that. And then you copy your IP address. Now your IP address will come in a grouping of four numbers. So you have the first number separated with a dot, the second number separated with a dot, the third number separated with a dot, and then the fourth number. That's your IPv4 address. So once you get that, what you want to do is under the IP address here, 
you want to put in your server's IP address. Now, the default port of a new server is usually port 22 for SSH. So if you get a server, except your hosting provider has ex ex explicitly told you that the port, SSH port number for your server has been changed, which most hosts will not do. The default SSH port will be port 22, so you want to leave this as port 22. And then once you leave that as post 22, what you want to do is that you want to open a connection to your SSH terminal. Okay, now this is our server. We are okay. And then I'll just go ahead and accept that. Now, once you do that, you will be asked to log in to your server. And once you are asked to log into your server, you will now provide the username of the server that roots here. Usually the default is usually root. And then once you are given the default as root, you want to put in the password to your server. So I'm just going to grab that and I'm just going to copy that, go back to Putty. And then in order for you to paste something into Putty, what you do is you do a right click. You don't do a left click, you do a right click. A right click, once you do a right click, that's a paste action. Now, your password you will not see. Passwords are usually not visible. So, you want to be careful to paste or to click that right mouse button just once. So, I'm just going to click once and then that makes a paste action and I'm going to hit the enter key. So, in order for you to give an instruction to your terminal what you just do is you type that instruction in and then you hit the enter key and that instruction is given to your server so you can see once i did that i am now logged in and you see i am now logged in as root at then the ip or whatever it is that the server is giving you now once you have done that it's now left for you to now begin to do what it is whatever it is you want to do on your server for this um tutorial we are going to be doing installation of cwp control web panel and that means that this is a brand new server there's nothing currently installed on the server so let's see how to do that so we'll go back to the CWP website, and then we look on the products for the installation instructions. And when you get to the installation instructions, the installation guide of this particular control panel, you would see all the details you need to have. For instance, they are saying we do not have an installer. After you install CWP, you must reinstall the server to remove it. So if you want to um, remove CWP from your server, you have to uninstall your server and we only support static ip addresses they gave you all those instructions then we have the system requirements so if you are getting a server what kind of server should you get in order for you to run cwp and then you have all these instructions and then are saying that you should have either you're having centos 7 or centos 8 or centos 8 stream now for the purpose of this we have installed centos 8 on our server so your provider would give you the ability to install uh, whatever OS, operating system you want on your server. So you can also tell them, oh, I want you to install CentOS 8 for me, and then they will do that for you. But for the purpose of this uh, tutorial, we're going to be working with CentOS 8 string. That's what we're going to be working with with CWP. So we have all that, and then it's telling us that we should have a minimum of um, 2 gig RAM, but it's recommended that we have 4 gig RAM. So our server actually has 4 gig RAM of space. So when you're getting the server, make sure you're getting nothing less than 4 gig of RAM. And then we go to server update. So once we have done that, the next thing CWP is asking us to do is that we should run an update on our server. And it's saying we should run this command, yum. Yum is a command, a Linux command, dash Y install we get so we copy this and then we go back to our putty and then right click once it's pasted hit enter key and then that command gets run so this server is updated there's nothing is this server is updated there's nothing to do so we go to the next command which says you may need this if you are using centos 8 of course we are using centos 8 but um we are not going to go here because i just feel we don't need it then we go to the next command, which is server update, and it says yum-y update. So you go there, 
and then you put it in your putty right by right clicking once that's a paste and then your dash y update you hit enter and then all you need to do after you hit that command is wait for your server to be updated now there are times when you run commands like this and then after you run the commands you just notice that it's like things just stop and nothing is moving when such things happen all you just need to do is wait just it's like you can see on the screen now it's like nothing is right happening right now everything is static but then you just need to wait because it means that something is being done on that server something is being downloaded something is being installed so all you just need to do is wait and once you wait you would see that after a while once that action has been completed the installation process will carry on so it's as simple as that all you just need to do is follow the instructions put in the command follow the instructions put in the command and you'll see things being updated in real time that's how to work on your linux server that's how to do your installation we're already installing the linux server so uh once that is complete you check what is the next step in the process and then you carry out that process you check what is the next step in the process you carry out that process until your installation is complete and then you can log in into the graphical user interface of the control panel that you are installing now the good thing about going through a course like this is this once you have done the installation it opens you up to basic linux server administration and then you can up your skills from that point and begin to learn different kinds of linux command how um, things work on the linux server how you can get things done on your linux server so as soon as this is complete we'll go to the next step in the installation instructions and then we we'll carry that out and we we'll take it up from that point now the process is complete the update of the server is complete and you can see complete here and once you see complete the next thing you would see or notice is that you would notice that the cursor that cursor goes back to where you started from now there are no then there's nothing on the screen again but then you have your cursor going back you can see that green mark going back to that same route at whatever it is that you started with that shows that you are ready to run the next command that action that was being performed on your server is now complete so what do you do you go back and then you look at what is the next thing to do on the server and that's to do a reboot now i'm going to copy that reboot instruction and i'm going to go back to the server and i'm going to just right click once now if you right click more than once you see what is happening you see what each time you right click you are doing a paste so you just do a right click once so that you don't repeat the command once now the moment i hit enter to reboot the server is going to go through a shutdown and restart phase that means the server is going to be powered down and then the server is going to restart again so essentially i'm doing a reboot now the moment your server is powered down your server will lose internet connection and once your server has gone off and it's no longer online it means that you will not be able to connect to your server via ssh again so in order for you to keep working on your server you would need to open another ssh connection so you can just decide to close this putty tab and then open a new one or you can decide to right click right there and then do a new session and then you start again in the next video we're going to look at the next instruction and then we're going to take it off from there i'll see you in the next video bye bye